This is African Port Business Forum and I am your host, Philip Nyakbo. My guest for a thoughtful business conversation is Della Matanawi, Director of the Austral African Survey Group based in Perth, Australia. Della, a professional surveyor, started off as an employee in Africa where he quickly recognized his own business acumen and created a company. And then he moved to Australia and formed a partnership in business to deliver first-class mining service services across Africa and Australia. Dela Matanawi in this interview says, the demanding nature of surveying as a business is possible only for those with uncommon commitment and passion. Here now is the thoughtful conversation with Dela Matanawi. I did one of the tough courses as they call it, physics, um, mathematics, and geography. And uh, I found out that with that, you could only do physics, mathematics, geography, piloting, surveying, navigation. So your options were a bit limited. So I decided to go for surveying. What, what did you know about surveying before making the decision? I didn't know much about surveying, but all I knew was that it was the science of, you know, demarcating and putting plants on paper and moving plants from paper onto the ground. That was uh, a long time ago, isn't it? Yes. So today, you're a surveyor. How would you explain what the surveying profession is to other people? The survey is a very interesting profession and uh, it's got different branches. Um, there is mine surveying, there is geodetic surveying, which is land surveying, and we also have hydrographic surveying, and uh, there are other branches such as remote sensing, there is other branches such as um, photogrammetry. So, and they all have specific you know, areas of interest. But I chose to become a mine surveyor, which basically involves um, setting out in the mine site of designs and collecting data to run quantities in the mine. Uh, what was it specifically that made you choose mine surveying? As at the time I was actually going to the university, there were, I would say, three institutions that they were doing surveying in Ghana then. There was the survey school in Accra, and there was um, the University of um, Science and Technology, which used to be Kwame Kuma, um, University of Science and Technology in Kumasi, that was doing geodetic engineering, which is survey. And then there was the University of Science and Technology School of Mines in Takwa that was offering the mine surveying course. As at that time, I saw mining to be very lucrative because there seemed to be a lot of money in that field. So out of the three, I decided to choose mine surveying. And But ultimately, you didn't just become, say, an employee in a mine, as a mine surveyor. You also had your own business. After graduating as a mine surveyor, I worked about three years as a, as a mine surveyor. As in, in the role of an employee? In the role of an employee with uh, international companies, moved into project engineer, moved into project surveying on mine developments, moved into contract mining surveying. But along the line, I realized that um, I had a bit of entrepreneurial skills and there was the need to work for yourself as you go along. So that edge gave me the opportunity to add, I would say, business acumen to my profession. 
How much of a challenge was that? It was really challenging because as at the time I started doing that, I was still an employee and I was working for my own on the side. So you close from your normal work and you had to dedicate time to your personal work as well. So it's, it's, it's really involving, it takes all your energy. So you're working more or less 24 hours a day. What were the aspects of entrepreneurship you found most challenging, maybe apart from spending 24 hours working? The challenging part in my case was having to wake up every day and worrying about people that you employ and what was going to be their next job opportunity. So you always had to be on the lookout for job opportunities to be able to ensure that the workers that you've got working have a sustainable work and income and income you're looking at contractual work and we all know contract starts and ends so it's not something that you have work guaranteed forever but if there's a contract ending there should be another contract starting somewhere and that is the difficult part of it having to make sure that you have continuous work for your employees. So what was it that motivated you to take the risk of setting up a company in Ghana as a surveyor? Of course, now you work in Australia, you have an Australian company, uh, the Australian African Survey Group, uh, for which you were a director, but at the same time, you uh, first of all had a company, a surveying company in Ghana. Uh, what was it that motivated you to take that bold step? I saw the opportunity in terms of the demand for <clears throat> surveyors on projects and it was just good to take that opportunity. The second factor was having to put money in the pocket of people's life meant a lot to me because you are not feeding only one person by doing that. You are feeding a family and that's service to humanity. And service to humanity is service to God. Now you did say the opportunity came up, but wouldn't you say you're actually downplaying it? Because in many cases, opportunities are something you actually go for. They don't come to you. To be honest, my work and what I did brought about the opportunity because of the delivery. At the end of the day, you work so hard that your work was appreciated. Everybody wanted to work with you. So then the opportunity came up. And you, you're only one person. You can't be everywhere else. So you tell yourself, yes, you want somebody like me. I can get you somebody like me. Now tell me about surveying itself as a profession. What is it about surveying that makes it so challenging? Surveying as a profession is it's a, it's actually an old profession. Well, and you pro you want to say from the dawn of human history? In I some would way? say yes, because you can imagine the Romans and the Egypt, the way they built all those pyramids and all those civilization times. How did they build all those things? Somebody surely had to map points on the ground for them to start positioning things. And that is survey. The challenge about survey is... It's dynamic, it's evolving, day in, day out, there's new technologies, new equipment, so you are forever learning on the job, it never ends, and it used to be very tedious in terms of physical work out there. For instance, before a company does some designing of structures in an area, they would want a topography of that area. And to have a topography of an area requires a lot of work. For instance, in a virgin area where there are trees and vegetation and things like that, 
Is that you, what they call green fields? Green fields, yes. And you need to cut through thick bush and pick up points and just show the levels of the ground and the position in terms of contours. It's a lot of work physically. But that's still hard to conceptualize as to uh, why it is so hard. Now, I'm aware that uh, it is becoming a challenge attracting people into the profession. It is thought that there's actually shortage of surveyors. What exactly is it about it that makes it so difficult to, to approach and graduate uh, to become a surveyor? The difficulties, I'll tell you, the first part of it is the course itself. It's not that easy. It is quite involving. After going through all the hard yards academically, it's draining physically as well. You have to be out there in the field. Let me give you an example of colleagues of mine as compared to me. Colleagues of mine that did economics, did accounting, and me with my surveying profession. At the end of the day, I have a job with a company, a reputable company. Half or almost 90% of my day is out in the field, in the sun, working about collecting data, staking out information for builders to do. And my colleague is always in a suit and a tie sitting in the office in a nice air condition as an accountant. And he probably gets paid more than I do. But I'm out there doing the hard yards. I that, think that tells you why people would choose other professions over surveying. Makes sense, but I thought it would be nice to point out also that we're recording this interview in the middle of December in Perth, where the weather as we speak is 42 degrees. So I can imagine what it means for you if you have to be working out in the field in a 42 degree <laughs> heat. That's exactly what it is like. If you go out to the Pilbaras, you go out onto the roads and you're driving in your cars and you see the surveyors working, look at the operators, the machine operators, they are all sitting in a machine which is fully air -con. But the surveyor would have to come out, walk the distance and put the points on the ground under the scorching sun. <laughs> So tell me though uh, about your own experience when you started off learning or studying to become a surveyor. Uh, what was it about the course you did that indicated to you that it was challenging? Uh, did, did, uh, you, did all of your colleagues pass and became surveyors? And, because that would say something about um, how challenging it is. I remember my first lecture in the university the lecturer came into the lecture hall and said gentlemen you have chosen a noble profession but i can guarantee you that there are 10 of you who have opted for this course and by the end of the first or second semester some of you will be dropping this course and some of you would graduate, others would not graduate. And truly, by the time we were actually finishing the course, there was seven of us, three had defected to other courses. And even after finishing the course and we started practicing, in my year group, there is only two or three of us currently practicing as surveyors. Out of the rest, total of 10? Out of the total of 7 that graduated as my surveyors in my year group. But of course you started, there were 10 of you there that started. There were 10 of us, some others defected to other courses. And then, out of the 7 that graduated, there's 2 or 3 of us practicing as surveyors. All the remaining 5 have moved into mine planning, mine operations, and taking a different direction. So, it makes the point clear what the challenges are and what it is like working as a surveyor. 
why have you chosen to remain a surveyor if it is that challenging? If you have the passion for something, at times it's difficult to let go because it's your passion and you derive that joy in seeing your end products. You move around and I did this, I did this, I did this and it's still there. That passion is no longer there. A lot of people have not got the passion for the job. Some people do it just for the means. And that is different from having the passion for it. What makes it attractive to you personally? I believe it's the passion that I've got for it. And I always see a potential. There's always that demand for surveyors in different aspects. Some years ago, you moved to Australia. And when you did, you uh, approached another surveyor, uh, Brad McGregor, your colleague whom I interviewed um, earlier. And then you just said to him, Brad, let's form a company and call it the Austral African Survey Group. Um, why did you decide to do that? Because Brad actually confirms that that's exactly what you did. I always identify the potential and the opportunity, and that's, that's one thing that keeps me going. I had known Brad over the years in Africa. We worked together for like a podium. So he was actually my boss, and then after some time, I was the go person for like a podium on the African project. So Brad was back here in Perth. Upon relocation, I got in touch with Brad and I said, there are opportunities out there in Africa. Surveyors are required. And between you and me, we have actually worked with a lot of good surveyors that we know their capabilities. Let's put up a company here and employ the African surveyors to work in Africa on projects that have got head offices here in Australia. I see a win-win situation there. We would benefit one way or the other. At the same time, the companies would also benefit. The Africans would benefit a lot as well. What's the mechanism that makes it a great partnership? The model, it's a unique one. It's not common. The model works in such a way that the clients benefit in terms of costs. Having to get expatriate surveyors to go out to Africa to do a lot of jobs is not that cheap. But if you have the right caliber of trained African surveyors, there to make use of then it's a cheaper model for the clients on the side of the african surveyor there is technology that is being brought in which is of a lot of benefits to them at the same time there is a source of income so what you're saying is the companies you work for benefits. And then the Africans you employ benefit Benefits. because they get uh, to enjoy the technologies that are sent down there um, and everyone goes home happy. Exactly. Who is going to bring them the technology? It is us. We are based here. We know of all the latest technology coming out. So we hereby convince our clients we can use this technology and it will save you a lot. The African surveyors benefit. They learn the technologies. They are ready for the international market as well. Apparently, the business of survey is, is technology driven. It's technology intensive. How true is it? When we started surveying, we started by using the Tudor lights, which is not described as a total station. Coming from the point of a Tudor light, you are only reading angles between points. 
and then with those angles you go back and distances measured you go back and you work out the exact coordinates this evolved and we had total stations total station is another type of theodolite but it's an advanced theodolite that's why it's called a total station it's all inclusive that's how it's described so you go out to the total station you set out on a point a known point and you are able to read directly coordinates of another point so you can see the the evolution there from a theodolite to a total station it's a totally different game then there is the gps technology that came up then which means that you just set up at one known point and you carry a pole and you move around and you just record all the coordinates of all the points that you want at the go that's another huge evolution then there is the uav you now take a small plane the uav will be the unmanned, the unmanned aerial vehicle, area vehicle or the drone or the drones you take a small plane or a small quadcopter and then you fly over an area and you go back into the office and you have a good photograph of the area at the same time you are able to derive the coordinates of exact points within that flight so you can see how fast and dynamic survey is moving and if you don't keep up with that sort of technology you are no longer marketable if all you do is the Tudor light system when everybody's talking about uavs and total stations and gps's then you have no idea where is your marketability apart from that there's also a, a cost a factor it can be very expensive these things you're mentioning these technologies that are employed um, in surveying there is a cost factor but at the end of the day in the long term it makes a huge difference it obviously reduces the number of surveyors to be used and assistance especially so that impacts on personnel as well you want to give people jobs you want to train locals you want to give them some profession to walk into but the technology requires some level of knowledge or education and, and continuous experience. and continuous learning so I, I wanted to get back to this uh, matter about the fact that there is you know a reasonable shortage of surveyors it's hard to get people become interested to start a course and finish it and become professionals and remain as such so uh, given the partnership that Australia African Survey has introduced between Australia and Africa what are you doing to be able to close that gap to encourage many more to take up uh, take up the uh, surveying profession the opportunity we offer is to make sure that you have the working experience you are abreast with the current technologies and you have the opportunity of coming to work in the developed country when there is shortage and there is a requirement for surveyors and you are talking about the africans, the africans you that we employ so we give you the opportunity to come and work here what about industry wide uh, what efforts are being made to to address this this uh, issue it's a difficult situation for the industry there are a lot of young surveyors that have graduated they probably go to the field for 2 years and they give it up they branch off to do something else it's too hard it's too involving because i see my mates sitting in the office the whole day 
having a cup of tea as an accountant or as an HR person and I'm out there, you know, working throughout the sun, I'm gonna I'm gonna sit in the office as well. So you understand that if you don't have the passion for, for serving, the tendencies of you dropping it off is higher because of the situation and the conditions around the work environment. And that was the thoughtful business conversation with Della Matanawi, director of the Austral African Survey Group based in Perth, Australia. My name is Philip Nyakpo and African Port Business Forum is produced by African Port Media in Perth, the Silicon Valley of mining, energy and business. Subscribe free to our audio podcast if you have not done so already. We are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and wherever you listen to your podcast. To find us on YouTube, just search for African Pod Business Forum. Our website, africanpod.com, has more information including photos and articles of interest. Follow us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, as well as LinkedIn. Just search for African Pod. That is African Pod as one word. And don't forget to check all of our previous interviews with exceptional guests, all on African Pod Business Forum.